Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? Real Fans Real Talk.com, where Arthur Domus trick young and intern time for the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, uh -huh. then you deserve a bad ass. Gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real Fans Real Talk.com got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest, I'm talking about the greatest. Go check out the archive. Even tell a neighbor, tell a body sent ya. From spring to winter, tune in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk .com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk .com. Real fans, real talk .com. Uh, Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk .com. Real fans, real talk .com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk. I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. We got a great show lined up for you tonight. A lot going on in the world of sports. My co-host, Trip Young, is not here tonight, so we do have a very special guest. Kim Hampton, one of the pioneers of the WNBA, is here. Also multi-talented because she sings as well. And of course, Ladybug is in the building. A lot of fans only care about Ladybug anyway, so Trip Young's not, not going to be missed too much by the majority of the fans. But as you see, uh, the seat next to me is... Uh, is open. It's just me and the ladies tonight, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna have some fun. I'm gonna go over uh, a lot of things uh, real quick in the world of sports. First of all, congratulations to Team USA. They win their first World Baseball Classic, beating Puerto Rico. Uh, it's great that the USA finally got their first win in that, and hopefully uh, many more to come. Uh, also, Russell Westbrook. Uh, just had the first ever perfect triple-double in history. And uh, basically what that means is he had got a triple-double double and he did not miss a shot. He did not miss a field goal and he did not miss a free throw. So that is pretty amazing. And he's uh, right now he has 35 triple-doubles for the season. 41 is the record held by Oscar Robinson in that record-breaking 61-62 season. Um, he's pretty much got the triple-double in, in a season on lock. He only needs 6.9 rebounds per game and 7.7 .7 assists per game uh, to, to get the uh, triple-double for a season, which has not been done uh, since the Big O did it. And the Big O is the only person in history to do it. So we're, we got a lot of history being made in the world of sports. So uh, unfortunately, Russell Westbrook will most likely not win the MVP. Uh, but um, the Big O did not win the MVP that year either when he did it. Uh, Bill Russell did. So uh, James Harden, the favorite for the MVP. And local news, the Knicks are battling with the 76ers to see who is going to be the worst team. Uh, the worst of the two in the NBA. Uh, the 76ers are one game behind the Knicks, but the Knicks are on a four-game losing streak, so they're hoping to lose out more than the 76ers for draft pick purposes, it looks like. Also, we got the Big Three League coming up at the Barclays Center in June. For those of you interested in tickets, you can see the great Allen Iverson and uh, many others uh, step back on the court. I'm excited to be there. Some of the folks over here, Real Fans Real Talk, will be in the building. It's going to be a historic moment over there. And um, we did have some boxing in the Madison Square Garden, the other stadium over here in New York, the, the more monumental one, uh, Danny Jacobs versus Triple G. And, you know, I watched the fight several times, and I just really, truly believe that Danny Jacobs won that fight. I mean, it wasn't hands down, but at the same time, it, I think it was clear enough where uh, Danny Jacobs should have gotten that victory. Uh, of course, I may be a little bit biased since uh, Danny Jacobs was on the show uh, be before he was interviewed by Trip Young. And a big shout out to uh, 
Danny Jacobs. Let's play that drop that he gave for us uh, when Trip Young interviewed him. Hey, what's up? This is the WBA middleweight champion of the world, Daniel Jacobs. Keep it here. Keep it locked right here on Real Fans, Real Talk. Welcome to Real Fans, Real Talk. Now, you know, Danny Jacobs, he's, he's got a promising uh, f future ahead of him still, uh, despite the loss to Triple G. I mean, Triple G, I understand, you know, when it's close, you kind of give it to the champ over there. Triple G has been one of the more dominant forces in, in the world of boxing, but I think uh, that he, you know, Danny Jacobs got robbed. But uh, moving on, we are going to get to our... Uh, special guest I'm, I'm feeling a little bit lonely on the set here by myself i wanted to give you guys a quick run in the world of sports but we got a great interview uh coming up as i said she was a pioneer in the wmba she also sings we're gonna show off some of that singing talent as she sang the national anthem for the new york sharks which is a women's football league that started uh two years after the women's basketball league so uh, she's a supporter over there of the Sharks, and uh, we'll have a little display of her singing voice, and then we'll, when we come back, we'll have Kim Hampton in person, on set, live for you guys. And longtime supporter of the New York Sharks and the Fins Up Foundation, please welcome Kim Hampton. <laughs> Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through We are back live on Real Fans Real Talk with the one and only Kim Hampton. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Mark. Thank no you. problem. Now, you grew up in Kentucky. Um, That's right, Louisville. And and then eventually <laughs> playing in the biggest city in the world. What was that like, uh, you know, going from uh, the south to the big city? Well, it didn't quite happen like that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of in-between, <laughs> and we're going to get into the, we're going to get into that, too. Yeah, um, I just always had a passion for travel, and I always wanted to see the world. So, And I was never afraid to travel, because when I graduated from high school, I chose to go to Arizona State University. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to see something different. So, you know, from high school, I was just kind of used to traveling, so... And then after that, after Arizona, you did a lot more traveling oh, with yeah. teams uh, overseas. Uh, I believe uh, it was a, f a few years in, in, what was it, four and a half, six years in Spain. Sí, de verdad. Six years, seis años en España. Cuatro uh, años y media in okay. uh, Italia. <laughs> four and a half so, in well, Italy. Let me say that in Italian. Anche cuatro años y medio in Italia. Okay. Um, and I played one year uh, in France, and then I played one year in Japan as well. Now, what was that like? And you know, 
internationally? How was the perception of, you know, I know a lot of the, the you know, the male college players that we have on that play internationally, they feel like, uh, you know, they treat you like kings over there, you know, when you play basketball in the country. But on the women's side, was it the same kind of or similar? Or? I, I think it depended on the player and it depended on the organization and as it would be now. Um, I had great experiences, but I was also that player that sought to learn the languages. Um, I wanted to hang out with my teammates, go to their homes and eat. I wanted to do what the locals did, um, you know, and again, learning the language, languages, shall I say. So, um, you know, it was, it was very welcoming and, you know, and then I played hard and I was a good player as well. So it was, um, it was a very positive experience for me. Nice. And then moving on up, uh, during that time frame, though, like, you know, the, your entire basketball career, did you ever think that there was going to be a professional um, women's mm. league in your time? I did not. I thought that it would eventually happen. I just didn't think that I would be playing long enough to have been a part of it. So, um, and, and the, and the crazy thing about it was, um, right after the 96 Olympics, uh, we were, I was playing in Italy at the time and I was approached by one of the players who was actually kind of helping in the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. Uh, and she asked me if I, they were going to, she told me they were going to start a professional league in America and asked me if I wanted to play. And you know, she was saying, you know, this, they was they were starting out the six figure incomes, uh, you know, maybe like 110, 120 or something like that. Mm -hmm. I could I can't really remember. And I was I immediately contacted my agent. I was like, hey, you know, what's going on with this? You know, he's like, yeah, yeah, don't sign anything. You know, and I was like, well, why? I was like, it's an opportunity to play in America and overseas. He's like, no, he's like, you can't say anything. But the NBA is going to start a women's league um, the following uh, summer so hold tight you're gonna play in that one and I was like are you mm -hmm. sure so um you know just that's to a, have, that's yeah. a good agent at least because yeah. then you would have been stuck on uh on the league that's definitely not you know yeah and you know they eventually folded and their players came into the WNBA um but um you know it was just amazing to to um to have lasted that long and to have did you know Lisa Leslie and I did the first ever jump ball and I scored the first two points for the New York Liberty in the history of the game and you know to have just been um a part a pioneer you know of mm -hmm. something that is this year kicks off the 21st year you know it's still going strong you know it's it makes me feel really really proud no um you were draft. Not only were you drafted by the New York Liberty and part of the first draft ever, but you were a first round pick, mm -hmm. number four overall. I guess because maybe you were the veteran out there and the leader. I guess no. Well, and it was the elite draft. See, yeah. you can't you can't get that mixed up. Okay, <laughs> um, because the WNBA, what they did was they chose. They went all over the world because mm -hmm. a lot of us were playing. They got the college players that were coming out. Rebecca Lobo was grad, you know, coming yeah, yeah. out that year. I think Tina uh, Thompson, you know, so they got all the top college players, but then they had to go to Europe. So they sent Renee Brown over to Europe to scout our games. And um, they decided that they were going to choose, have an elite draft. So they were going to choose the top 32 players. Um, and so that was mixed with college and uh, players abroad. And so I happened to be in that elite draft. And so I got drafted to the New York Liberty. The first two players got placed on the team. So mm -hmm. they placed Rebecca Lobo and Teresa Weatherspoon on the team. And then the, so and they placed two players. It was eight teams originally in the start of the WNBA. And they placed two players. They placed Lisa Leslie in California. I think they tried to have you know, the college players near or, you know, as close to as possible the market that they played in as, in college. And then this, that second go round, the second two players, and they drafted us. And so that was myself and Vicki Johnson. And then they had a whole open combine type of thing, and that was the regular draft. Yeah. So. I mean, still fourth out of yeah, to even be cool. considered when you're talking about the whole world yeah. and only 32 people and you're number four. Yeah, like, it was just cool. I mean, did I'll, you, did you um, care where you went as far as, <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> or was it at least this, this, this or that? Or yeah. or did you know kind of in advance that it was going to be the Liberty? Or? I didn't know in advance. Um, as a matter of fact, I was practicing. Uh, in re uh, Well, my teammate that I played with, my American teammate, was Michelle Edwards. And she was one of the top, one of the first two that got placed on a team. And they placed her on the Cleveland team. And then, you know, and I knew the players that, that were going to her team. Um, and I was kind of like, oh, man, that team is going to be good. I want to play on Cleveland. I want to go to Cleveland. I want to go to Cleveland. You know, and stuff. a little that I know my agent, you know, had his hopes set, you know, that I would come to New York, which was a complete blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you just, you, you know, you never know. Um, and, uh, you know, so, yeah, I wanted to go to Cleveland first just because I didn't know any better. But it was such a blessing to be in the New York market. Yeah, definitely no question Cleveland, about that. Cleveland no longer exists. Yeah, oh, I'm glad you feel that way. <laughs> I, I feel that way too about LeBron James and the Cavaliers. No, the but, women. <laughs> oh, no, I know. I like I'm, I'm just, Go LeBron. I, I know what you meant, but I mean, little, like, you know, no. well, I was just, yeah, it wasn't a very good joke. Not my finest moment. <laughs> but, just stick to broadcasting. <laughs> uh, well, my jokes are pretty good 90% of the time, but anyway, uh, New York Liberty Ring of Honor. Tell me about that. Um, it was amazing. Um, it was like being in the, it's, you know, when you go in, in the garden, you see all of those jerseys, you know, um, Clyde and uh, Earl the Pearl, you know, you have all, of, you know, red, you know, there's all of these um, jerseys up there. And so I guess that was... Um, their version, the W, well, the New York Liberties version of doing the same thing, kind of starting a Hall of Fame for their players. And, you know, it was wonderful. I, uh, I think the, the fans also got an opportunity to uh, vote as well. So it was just wonderful. To um, now, the, the New York Sharks, you got involved with them and the Fins Up Foundation. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us about that? Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I have, I know the owner, um, and the general manager, so they're very good friends of mine, and I met them at the Women's Sports Foundation, and, um, we just hit it off, and so every year I look forward to helping them out, do, you know, by doing whatever I can, they have, you know, a bunch of clinics for girls and things like that, and so I always go and speak, and, and they ask me if I would do an anthem, so... Every year I do an anthem for them, and, and uh, you know, that's Did pretty much... Did you do the, one of the New York Liberty theme songs or something like that? Or yeah, I sang one, one year, I sang one of the theme songs. Uh, yeah, so I've done some stuff. Yeah. Multi-talented and multilingual, too. That's right. I mean, <laughs> um, now, what about, is there any other charities that you're involved with? Or? Um, well... We get an opportunity to go to a lot of events like the Arthur Ashe charity. Um, I usually go to that every year. Um, I mean, it's 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 a lot. I mean, it's, you know, it's just a lot of galas that we go to. Um, you know, get an opportunity to go to and help out the Bonaconte. Um, you know, so you know, if, if I can do it, the Muscular Dystrophy MDA that event, the Muscle Team event. Um, you know, I always try, if I'm if I'm available, I always try to help out by going and attending. And it's a great time, and it's a great opportunity um, to um, to help their cause. What is it like knowing that, you know, when you were the pioneer of the WNBA, that you had a bunch of little girls out there in the audience that looked up to you and probably influenced uh, some of the WNBA uh, players, you know, and... It's pretty cool. In the future. Um, you know, it's it's really funny because um, today I was getting out of my car and a man was walking down the street and he was like, Hampton, Hampton. And I was like, yeah, you know, and it's so funny. Or I might get this, you know, like, you know what? You look just like that girl that played basketball for the New York Liberty, you know. It's a, so it's really You're like, cool. yeah, I get that all the time. I don't know why. <laughs> or out of the clear blue sky, you know, you'll just be walking down the street and someone will have your jersey on. And it's kind of like, whoa, blast from the past, you know. And um, But it was amazing to look out and see the little girls, you know, or the men or the women, you know, wearing your jersey and just knowing that you've affected their lives. Like, I still have 
have friends that they were kids when the WNBA started. Now they've graduated from college, have, you know, one one kid that grew up with us. Her name is Kim. She has a couple of kids now, you know, so it was and is, I shall say, that it is just amazing to touch lives in that way and to have had the opportunity to get paid to do what you love, to travel, see the world, but to touch lives. Yeah, definitely. Now, and now you, my daughter is balling, so. There you go. Um, okay. Do you um, do you reunite uh, occasionally with the Liberty teammates? Yeah, well, Sue Wicks and, and Teresa Weatherspoon are here, so we get a chance to see each other because we still do appearances and things like that. But last year, the New York Liberty had a 20th anniversary, um, kind of like a homecoming event where they brought in all of the the players on the inaugural team and so all but one or two I can't remember I think just one player because she was in Iraq she so she was unable to come but everyone came and so it was just a wonderful time so we have each other's you know every now and then we text some crazy stuff or you know we'll tease Rebecca with something you know or something so we try to reach out to each other you know when we get an opportunity yeah, that's definitely cool well, you'll be reunited with Teaspoon in a way, as uh, I had the pleasure of interviewing Teaspoon a while back, so I'm not, have you seen the interview yet? Or? Oh, no, I have not. Well, she was very excited talking about it. It was one of my favorite interviews, just because how, uh, you know, excited she was mm. talking about those days and everything, so it's always great. Mm -hmm. uh, to the second pioneer that we've had on the show. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's a ball of energy. I mean, she we call her the spark plug. I mean, she, come on, you know, I mean, she, she was always into it. I mean, she, now she's such an awesome speaker and her position right now is um, she's the director of player development for the New York Liberty. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just watching her work the players out, they'll show footage. You know, if you check out the, um, w, uh, the New York Liberty website, and you'll see footage of her just and she's that exact same way as if she was playing, you know, so her energy is just am her leadership and energy is just amazing definitely well we're gonna play that clip and uh, of the interview i had with oh, teaspoon and we'll be right back Real with more with Miss Hampton. Young and intern Tom, but a white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the cat scan. Hello, everyone. Mark the Stat Man, Skevich, Real Fans, Real Talk here at the 50th anniversary of Rucker Park here one of the, with one of the iconic legends in women's basketball, Teresa Witherspoon. Thank you for coming on the program. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. Now, you've had a lot of accomplishments in the sport of basketball, a coaching career, playing career, uh, Olympic gold medalist. What would you say is your biggest moment in your career? I, I can't pinpoint that. That's really, really difficult to pinpoint. The biggest thing and the greatest thing for me is the opportunity uh, because you have to take a true advantage of an opportunity. So it's been just great to have an opportunity to play a game that uh, I was gifted at playing and, and love so very much at playing. But it's never a one thing when it comes to the game. It's the opportunity and taking advantage of the opportunity. Now, you're one of the pioneers of the WNBA back in 1997 when the league started with the New York Liberty. What was that feeling like being there, one of the first to ever do it? Man, you know, this is it, it was amazing to, to play in Madison Square Garden. I'm sure it was amazing for all the other young ladies and the teams in which they played for, but we were playing in New York City. We were playing in Madison Square Garden. We were playing in front of the greatest fans there is in the world. So it was an exciting moment for us all to be able to play back in America and play a game we love in America because we were all basically overseas playing because that was our dream was to be able to play, continue after college and we played overseas. But to come back in America and be chosen to play in New York City and Madison Square Garden, that was the greatest feeling in the world. Now, when did you fall in love with the sport of basketball? I was very young. I, uh, um, I'm from a family of nothing but athletes, so and I'm the baby, so I had to fall in love some kind of way, but they said I picked up a ball at four years old and just started playing with it, and um, my family, brothers and sisters pushed me with the game of basketball and, and many other sports, because I'm from a very small place, so all I did was play every sport possible with guys all the time. Now, growing up as a kid, did you ever think imaginable that, you, that there would be a uh, a, a WNBA and that you would be playing for them? Well, you know, we never imagined that. We, we were trying to take advantage of the opportunities that were before us. And the ultimate at that time was to be an Olympian. So everybody was shooting to be an Olympian, and that's only 12. 
You only get 12 of those, so it was limited space, so to speak, for all the athletes, um, women, great athletes uh, in, the, in the game of basketball. So that was the ultimate for us. And then if you wanted to play collegiately, you had to go overseas. So it was, it was uh, trying times at, at points, but um, to have the WNBA come into existence because of our 96 Olympic team, showing everybody that women can play this game, we play it at a very high level, and we're professionals. Now, still involved with the Liberty, showing up here at, R at Rucker Park. Um, there's the saying, once a Nick, always a Nick. I guess the same is true with the Liberty. Once a Liberty, always a Liberty. You better know it. You better know it. Uh, we're all Liberty for life. You know, we put that uniform on. We put the uniform on as a family, uh, as a unit who played together, fought together. And once you, you put that uniform on, we were, we're, we're going to always be together as a family. And uh, So we're all Liberty for life, and I'm definitely Liberty for life. Now, some of the highlights... As a player of the New York Liberty, you had the half-court shot and the finals. Is there? I know you don't have a favorite career moment, but what about as far as uh, highlight plays? Does anything stand out? Is that it, the half-court shot, or does something else come to mind? You know, I think that's what everybody thinks about uh, when they think about the shot. You know, they think about, wow, that was a highlight moment. But for me, it was playing defense and passing the ball. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed making a great pass. I enjoyed watching my teammates make a nice shot or finish that pass and then defending you know that's the that's the gritty side of the game and I was a gritty kind of player kind of lived like the city I grind I was trying to grind it out every night and those were my moments I, I love stopping people I love putting that that blanket over people I enjoyed that I enjoy passing the basketball but when you talk about a moment that's a moment that everybody thinks of and I appreciate it all right it's common for men to teach females and in, in the sport of basketball uh, we, we, we're seeing it now with Becky Hammond and winning the Summer League with the Spurs. Do you think uh, it's a short time before we have a pioneer? Uh, will it be Becky Hammond or someone else soon uh, that coaches uh, professionally in the NBA? Well, you know, we're very, very proud of what Becky's doing. It's no surprise. We're not, we're not like trying to create millions and millions of headlines that she did it. We're just proud of her because we, you know, we know that she has the knowledge of the game, and that's what Pop saw. He saw a person with knowledge who can come in and make his players better and that's what she's doing and it's, it's just great for those doors to be open and when those doors open those who feel like that's something they desire to do you get in those doors also so uh, it's only a matter of time it's only a matter of time because the trust is there and, and, and I believe men understand that women play this game at a high level and we're very knowledgeable about the game uh, and, and that's the respect factor that that has to come in order all right, now we're here at the Rucker 50th anniversary. Uh, Madison Square Garden is the mecca of, of sports. Rucker Park has its own aura. Do you have any uh, favorite uh, players in Rucker Park or moments in uh, Rucker Park? I've always been out here. Uh, from my start of being a part of the Liberty, I wanted to get out here immediately to see the atmosphere. I was very, very close. It's like a little brother of mine, Tim Headache Giddens, uh, brought me out here and I got an opportunity to be a part of this atmosphere. And man, I started to feel what it's like to play out here. And I actually wanted to have an opportunity to play out here as well because of the many people who've played out here. Because this is historical. This is very historical, just like Madison Square Garden. So anybody would love to be a part of this atmosphere. And man, I'm, I'm back. I'm glad we're having this 50th uh, year anniversary because there's been so many greats to come through to make this place what it is today. All right, now word around the campfire is you gave uh, Allen Iverson a little trouble on one-on-one. -on -one. How, how true is that? I don't, know, I don't know about that campfire. That campfire, you need some water on that fire. No, no, no. I've always watched him and enjoyed the fire that this man brought to the game. Uh, to be as small as he, as he was, to play the game as hard as he did, uh, he, he was simply amazing. Uh, no one should ever forget uh, what he brought to the game of basketball and how hard he played. He gave his heart and his soul. And I, I know being um, uh, a 76er has meant the world to all those people in, in Philly because he, he brought them excitement night in and night out. And that can never be forgotten, never. I mean, the crossover, that's freaking unbelievable. Yeah, crossing I, over Jordan, too. Hey, hey but, the, but, but as small as he was, he can get to that rim and finish over anyone. Mm -hmm. Shoot the basketball, handle the basketball, pass the basketball, play defense. So when you can put all those things together in that little package that he brought every night, man, it says a lot. He's huge. Have you ever had any one-on-ones with any NBA players? Um, not any one-on-ones. Never had any one-on-ones. Had an opportunity to play with a lot of them, um, and and that was key. Have it's fun. You know, the game of basketball is just simply fun. Um, and and when you're playing with them, you you take some things that they do, 
and you learn from it and implement it into your game uh, because you can only learn when you're playing with uh, men of that caliber and, and that's what I always wanted to do I, I like playing against the men to prepare myself for my season all right Mark Skevich real fans real talk alongside Teresa Weatherspoon one of the pioneers in women's basketball one of the all-time greats legend thank you for coming on the program thank you I appreciate it Boom. All right, we're back live on Real Fans Real Talk. Just me and the ladies tonight, no trip young. Uh, oh, yes, nothing wrong amazing. with that. Mm -hmm. See, that's why you have the college shirt. Right. See, you didn't write it in the memo. I mean, so you have the college shirt. I knew know. it was going to be me and the ladies, so I had to look my best. That's just, you know, it's how, <laughs> wow. how it goes down. See? But uh, Ladybug is in the building. What's going on, Ladybug? Um, you know, as always, it's great to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Lovely to meet you. It's great, great to be in your presence. I'm definitely a fan, and I admire your talent, so thank you. Thank I you. appreciate it. You know, definitely just being a woman and just seeing another woman and in this day and age, especially me being younger, you know, younger generation, you know, it's always a lot of competition with women and just especially women that have other talents besides physical attributes you know you definitely have a talent and you know you're just a nice beautiful spirit so definitely oh, i admire thank it you. thank you so much thank you. but you know i'm not here to really you know admire i'm here to give you guys the rumor mill so i have to start off with this first and foremost because i'm a parent and i love to support my child and i will support my child in whatever he does and i just you know i need to know is this too much so lavar ball LeVar Ball, that's been the name that's been ringing in ESPN and social media and just the news in general. And I guess he's just taking supportive parent to a upper echelon, as they say, because, you know, he's he's going around and going to all these media outlets and letting them know my son is the best. You know, his son is just uh, he's a freshman in UCLA and he's doing amazing work as a freshman and he has two other sons that's you know uh really trying to also follow their older brother's path path excuse me and going to UCLA and pursuing basketball and being the dream but he's going on and he's making these statements that you know just is really probably taking away from his son than helping and I, I guess you know as as I'm not sure do you have children I do okay so um as a parent how do you feel, you know, you, you've seen the articles, you've, you've heard the statements now. What's, how do you feel about that? You know, I don't really take it serious. To okay. me, it's more of a smokescreen. And I think he's being very smart in what he's doing because now he has taken his, his brand, the, the brand of the family, he's taken that to a different level. By talking about it, it's on every sports talk show. You know, I mean, they're really dissecting it, mm -hmm. you know. He's doing exactly what he set out to do, make their brand a household name, and that's what it's become. Now, if he could get some money, and that is an astronomical price, a mm. billion dollars, you know, but he could get somewhere close to it because now that he has the followers, now that he has the people, and he's piqued so much interest, you know, he's, I think it's just smart, but I don't think he really, you know, he's, it's, He's kind of saying things like the president says things, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, he just throws it out there and just sees if it sticks, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Any publicity is good publicity. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, but then he goes on to say this is where it kind of makes people hit a sour note where he's like, well, you know, my son has to be better than uh, Michael Jordan. And it's like, well, you he, know. He said I, he could beat Michael, like the dad the, could beat yeah, Michael yeah. Jordan one on one. Know, but and that's, that's, we know he's not. He religious, really yeah, that. It's sacrilegious just to say that. But you guys have to understand, he doesn't mean that for real. You know, he's just, this is just a ploy just to get attention, mm -hmm. just to get, um, you know. Just yeah, not. it's just, you know, it's going to be water under the bridge pretty soon. It was just, you know, with with people taking to social media and it, it's like telephone, you know, that game telephone. It's you know. never, it's never what it's meant to be because it goes through all these ears and these hands and, you know, now computers and fingers and typing and it ends up being something that it's not supposed to be. So I know social media just went left with it and they're like, oh, they're starting to bash him. Yeah. Like, and it, it takes away, like I said, he's still going to school. He still has to keep up academics. Yeah. You, you know, you're a great ball player, but you know, the point is education. So it's something where, um, 
you know, he he goes on to say, you know, other things as well. You know, he has a better chance than LeBron's son. And then, you know, LeBron James goes on to say, listen, you can say your rants, but just please leave my child's name out your mouth now. You know, how do you feel on that aspect? Like, you know, yeah. just, just Again, still. I, 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 I think everyone is taking it too serious. Okay. Um, but I think now he should probably, because it, it has turned sour, I think that he should probably just come out and say, you know what? Of course, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that my my child is going to be or my children are going to be who they're going to be as athletes. But I'm not taking anything away from these guys that are already established. You know, I'm, I was just joking, you know, I, because everyone is taking it wrong, you know, and stuff like that. Listen, no, I have the utmost respect. I think they are the greatest players to come through thus far. But do I have hopes and dreams that my children will surpass that? Yes. So I think maybe if he did that, you know, yeah, it'll then it'll give it more longevity it. versus because now when stuff starts turning bad. But I, I think I thought I just thought it was a publicity stunt. And that's how I've taken it. Like, right. It doesn't offend me. I'm just like, oh, whatever. You know. His lo his lo logic behind that is he's saying that when, you know, you LeBron, when you have to look up to LeBron James and be the next LeBron James that puts that pressure, the fact that he wasn't great in basketball, he could make sure and dedicate, you know, himself mm -hmm. to making sure his kids are good at basketball. That's his logic behind yeah. it, which kind of makes sense because usually, you know, Steph Curry's better than his dad. Like, you know, the ones that... You know, you've never had, you know, Jordan or and any iconic, like, really big mm -hmm. superstar player have their son better. Like, you know, Barry Bonds, his dad was, you know, good, but he wasn't legendary. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so that was that was his logic behind the statement. But, you know, at the same time. It was and, the you know, method to the madness. You know, all him, the madness him, came out, but I guess he had a method and it just... Him being, you know, saying he'll beat Jordan and he'll beat Barkley and Barkley's fat. Like, he's making so many enemies, too, right. to where it's like, you know, he's going to have a target on him. The Suns are going to have a target. And, then, like, the Suns not going to be able to play for the Cavaliers probably now, so... But, and, but, but listen, I mean, but... The president made enemies too, right? The, and he's still the president. So. Oh, it's the, a great strategy <laughs> on the part of the dad. And, you know, a lot of the things he's saying is ludicrous, but it's it's catching the eye. It's catching the brand. And people will draft, you know, because it's, it'll, it'll sell tickets, I especially, guess. Especially, yeah, a market, a weaker market. Yeah, especially. Good. Exactly. I um, mean, I'm, I'm going to be watching the game on Friday. Like, I don't mm -hmm. follow, it's, I'm a New Yorker, so I don't follow college basketball that much. Uh, that's just a New York thing. But I do follow the March Madness tournament, and we are in the middle of the March Madness tournament. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm, I'm the way, I, I watched the interview on ESPN today with, with Ball and, you know, uh, I, uh, it got me hyped to watch the kid play. Like, I've seen them play before, but... Well, they're going just... down tomorrow because they're playing against Kentucky, my home state. Yeah. So, yeah. See, well, the Kentucky women, women's team is on, a, on another <laughs> level than everybody, too. But, <laughs> but, but uh, you know what, too? I, I mean, just to touch back on that, you know, you were talking about how each generation it, it tends to evolve a little bit more okay. so... You know, that's not really always the case because you think about there are so many athletes and I always say this, I always tease my, my uh, athletic friends, you know, that are professional athletes and stuff. I say because they want to get the little cute girls, you know, the little short, cute girls and stuff like that. They mess up the gene pool. So it's only really a handful of athletes that actually have children that were better than you gotta, them. You gotta breathe, <laughs> breathe them properly. You make gotta sure. breathe, you messing up the gene pool. That's actually what, what the, one thing that Ball said is he picked the yeah, nice toy exactly. or whatever. Like, exactly. He, he's so he been could, planning he it since be before on they were conceived. That's, now he could be on to something, that's what I'm saying. But it's a lot of those dudes, you know, they go for cute, you know, and petite and stuff like that. Then when their kids come out like, Mm. No, and they're like, what? They're not six, Look at Michael six, Jordan. Like five, Look at Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> they meet somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Just <laughs> saying. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they run the business, you know, I, mean, I don't know. He named all his kids with the first letter L. And, you know. You know, but they're, they're winning now. They're not taking an L right now from the way things look. But it is college basketball season, and we actually have one of, you know, I was talking about the people that you influenced, uh, one of your biggest fans, who also happens to be the pioneer female of Real Fans Real Talk, the first female co-host we've had 
uh, going back a few years when we were airing on Bronxnet television. She is actually in Kansas, which is playing in the Sweet 16 tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, so without further ado, uh, hopefully uh, we got Rose on the line there. How's it going, Rose? Oh my gosh, you can hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, hey, I Rose. can. Oh my gosh, this is huge, you guys. Hold on, I, I just have to take a few seconds here because as Skevich said, I am in Kansas here, uh, where March Madness is a big deal because I'm right at by KU in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, but the fact that Kim Hampton is on your show right now, Kim, oh my gosh. And and now that I'm on your TV, okay, good. I couldn't see you for a second there. I saw myself and I was like, hi. hi. <laughs> oh no, you don't even understand, Kim. Why are you even on our show? You are like the biggest deal to me. My my sister and I used to love you and Teaspoon and everybody um, on New York Liberty. We used to go to MSG and watch your games and get cotton candy. And um, I, I just had to say something really quick because aren't you the one? Oh, I think I should be looking. I don't think I'm looking in the right place. Sorry. I'm looking at you guys. Um, aren't you the one that sang the theme song? Can we can we get a rendition of that? Um Ooh. Living in New York, I was raised on the court. Is that right? Uh, I don't recall it being those words. Uh, gosh, and and hmm, I can't remember. I can't remember. Living in New York, I was raised on the court. Oh shoot, that's all I remember now. I don't even remember. First singer, you were you were the one that did that. I think. <laughs> Yeah, I did do that, but for some reason I can't rem I can't remember the words. I remember going in the studio, doing it. Uh, golly! And that's all that I remember from them. And then wait, no, no. Then there was the chorus. It was the chorus was like L I B, and then there was stuff in the background E R T Y. New York Liberty. I remember and, and that right. part. Yeah. You, you had to be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think she was. <laughs> I was there, but I just wanted to hear you do it. I think you did a great job. As a matter of fact, you should audition for the next year. You know what? Now that you said that, I think I, I need to drop Kansas and come back to New York and, and find my calling as a, as a what would that be, a WNBA um, women's theme song uh, singer. So... That'll be next on the list. But um, let me let me just get back to where I am right now. As you can see, I don't know if you can see behind me. I'm I so see sorry, some blue over the there for the Kansas fans. But What'd you say? Uh, stop, I, man. I can't hear you. Say that I, again. I said I, I see some people in blue over there, uh, Kansas fans, I guess. Exactly. Yes. There, there are lots of Kansas fans here um, re getting ready for the game. And it's going to be on in about, um, I actually can't tell the time right now, but I would say probably less than an hour it's going to be on. So it's already packed, even though it's still not nearly on. Everybody's really excited. I'm going to I'm gonna actually, sorry, I'm coming back to you. I'm going to go inside for a second and just show you what's inside. Hold on one second. Let's, Do you have let's any questions for in. Kim in the meantime? Sorry. Hi there. So, so now we are inside the bar here. You can see it's very crowded here. Let's take a look. They had in New York. <laughs> so these these are the uh, lovely uh, Kansas folks saying hi to New York. And we have hello. Um, I, I guess it's gonna be more packed Anthony. closer to the game with the college kids <laughs> over there, I guess. Fan? But yeah. she's a Jayhawk fan. Uh, who's your favorite player? Probably Devontae Graham. Okay, and what do you hope that they're gonna do with this tournament? I hope they kick butt and take home that national championship. You think they're going to beat per Purdue today? I do. I got faith. Okay. I'm going to get out of here. It's very loud. Thank you so much. She Sorry says she's got volume. faith. I don't know if you've heard any of that. But yeah, we heard. Now we're back outside. It's getting windy. By the it way, is, it is always... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. It is It is ladies' night here <laughs> on Real Fans of Real Talk. So uh, you picked the lady for the interview there. So the, the, keeping with the theme. Yes. Uh, but I mean, uh, do you have any, we, we got to move on to a couple topics, but do you have any other, other questions for Kim? Oh my gosh, Kim, I don't even, oh my, I should have thought about questions. I just, I just love you. And Come I just, on, you are real fans, real talk. You came up right with now. questions on the fly all the time. I know you're a little starstruck right now, but you got it in you. Wait, 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 sorry, Scott, Scott, man, I didn't hear you. It's so, it's windy. By the way, Kansas is so windy because it's flat. Um... What are you, what 
what are you doing now, Kim? What are you? When can I see you play again? Are you ever in like um, like like game still, or can we can we just like hang out sometime? <laughs> See, we can hang out, but you're not going to see me play anywhere. That's over. These no, knees a, right no. here, these knees right here, they're like, yeah, uh, no, not anymore. I, so, yeah, man, you, you went through a lot, I remember, but you're, oh, you're the greatest. You're yeah, the it, was, it was tough. I can't even believe my sister, when she finds out, I got to be kind of sort of on the same show with you and talking to you. You just have to know we like we love you so much. <laughs> well, we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna do something together, okay? We're gonna we're gonna when make I, something happen. I will oh. be back. Don't think because I'm in Kansas, you can't make good on that. Like I will be back in New York eventually. So uh, I promise you. I'll see you. Uh, <laughs> all right, Rose. Sound like a stalker a little bit, but no. <laughs> Hi, Rose. I'm, I'm, no, we we, we got to go to the the I new uh, I, lady I, of I, Real Fans Real Talk, Ladybug. She's finishing up her segment. If you want to stay on the line, maybe we'll check back in with you in a few minutes. Um, but Ladybug, what else is going on in the rumor mill? Well, um, you know, people probably see what does she have. So, you know, the camera can zoom in. Got the Kaepernick uh, doll back. You know, last time we had to talk about him, him, you know, taking a stand against what's going on. Well, back then. Now he's back and he's back with me. But. The reason why he's back is because nobody noticed, except for Spike Lee, and give it up for Spike Lee, that Kaepernick is still a free agent. So Spike Lee took to Instagram, took a photo with Kaepernick, and uh, put in the caption, you know, with these 32 uh, NFL teams, why is Kaepernick still a free agent? Now, you know... Stat man, you know, the stats, let's, you know, break it down, Kaepernick, him as a player just overall. Is he a good player? Can he be picked up? You know, is he well, I worth... think he's 4-16 and 16 in see? his last 20 games. Mm -hmm. And you have other quarter... Brian Fitzpatrick's a free agent. There's other quarterbacks who are not, you know, uh, big-name free agents. And well, he's talking about why is he still... At this point, it's not August. They still don't know what they're doing with Tony Rumo, whether they were going to release him, trade him, whatever. There's a lot of people out there in the mix. It's not like everybody signed but him. But uh, Coach Harbaugh came out and said, you know, um, uh, he's got potential to be a Super Bowl quarterback. Now, he lost weight. He doesn't have the muscle mass that he did during his prime with the 49ers. At the same time, to his defense, he was playing on a 49ers team recently that has been horrible so and a lot of quarterbacks would have a horrible record in that case so i think he's i mean i think he's going to get picked up but i don't, I don't no think should get picked up i don't think <laughs> and not just the doll picked up by, <laughs> by the guy the, I, up. I did see <laughs> you I picked them up there I you go will pick you up you're making him feel special <laughs> there see? did he cut his hair off um no, this was this was before. He's actually growing it out now. Now uh -oh. it's like really, you know, okay. long. But I think it just went to say, um, you know, I think Spike's lead MO is he felt like something fishy's been going on. It's not only the stats. I think it's, you know, Black just ball. his recent yeah, just his recent uh issues in media and him following his morals and his values. And, you know, we were talking about it off the air how uh, you know, people should stick to their morals and values. And even Statman, we talked about this last time, how especially people in the public eye, public figures, uh, you know, people that have that uh, attention with the media, with the public, with youth, with older people, just with any type of demographic should take their talents in, in that aspect and use it for positive and use it for good. And, you know, not always, you know, drown people with their morals, but also not be judgmental to the next person. So I think um, Spike Lee was just going on to say, hey, we understand that, um, yeah, he may have his morals and values, but he's still a great player. He's still a great asset. So why shouldn't he have He recently have did that some chance? good charity causes and things of that nature, and he said he's not going to kneel going forward because he doesn't want it to be a distraction. So, um, you know, at the same time, no one's, you know, he's a, he's a backup quarterback, maybe with potential, depending on the situation. It's nothing that's guaranteed. When you look at Tim Tebow, he was all positive, praying, God, everything, but he had so much media attention that he wasn't worth anybody picking him up because, you know, the Jets, he's a backup quarterback, but everyone's in the, you know, 
talking about Tebow, like you have so much attention for a backup quarterback. So, I mean, it is it is something that teams take into consideration when you're, you know, you have the media over you. But I don't think, you know, the, if the fact that he's not going to be kneeling again, I think that, you know, that's going to die out halfway through the season. And most, most teams know that, so... How you feel? Anna? Well, you know, I just, I just feel like you said it's really important for people to take a stand for something. Um, when you look back on history, I mean, Rosa Parks went to prison um, and took a stand uh, because she was tired. So why do I have to stand up or take, you know, and, and and you know, and then when you look at the the number of of young black men that were being killed, and all of the police officers were being acquitted. You know, it's it's just alarming, you know, mm -hmm. and it's very scary, especially when you come from the African-American background. And all he did in a peaceful manner was just to basically say, listen, you know, just like back in the day in the 50s, it was like when Muhammad Ali decided that he wasn't going to go to Vietnam and put his life on the line. Why? He can't even go into a restaurant and eat. There are certain things that he can't do. He's being called certain names. There's still segregation with, with education, with everything. So why should I put my life on the line? You're going to send me to the, on the front line, you know, and, and, and I have to die, you know, and why? So I think we just, with these things, we need to talk about these things. Uh, at the same time, I, I agree with you to a certain extent, but Colin Kaepernick isn't going through anywhere near with the, you know those guys did you know but, but right but what i'm saying time, is you know you no, stand no, no, up well, for your beliefs what, but no 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 but what we're saying is is we're talking about what's happening right now and people that have are held high have high esteem are people that are are big you know like uh, celebrities they ha they can cause a lot of attention because obviously these kids that are being killed and they're nobodies and i'm just using that as an example yeah. in the eyes of the media nothing is being said but when when heavy hitters step up and start making noise and saying something then people have a tendency to listen and so that's all he's doing he's been a rosa parks in this you know he's being you know he's he's stepping up to say something now you know at the same time when you talk politics you lose half the room and owners when they're thinking about signing somebody will think to themselves well are people going to not buy tickets because colin kaepernick is there so i mean it, it, you know as he in a way he did make a sacrifice because who knows whether you know team's going to pick him up or for a lot less money maybe than they would have otherwise but um we do have some other topics to go over mm -hmm. ladybug yeah. So we don't lose half the audience. No, 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 no. I mean, no, I mean no. it's a, it's obviously an interesting would, topic, would, but we only yeah, got a few you minutes to, left. But I to want go. you to talk about uh, this 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 Ric Flair one time, because you know I love how you talk about the Nature Boy. So <laughs> I wish Trip was here because he does it so well. Go ahead, you put me on the spot. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just Trip always does it, but you know, for Trip not being here, you had to do it. But um, yeah, so. WrestleMania. It's, had, it's been a lot going on with WrestleMania, but um, you know, I guess I guess WrestleMania has gotten to the point where it's just they're just taking anybody now. It's just you know before it was the wrestlers, you had the heavy hitters like you said those you know like the Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, the Undertaker, like those those big names. But now you're getting like Big Show and Shaq. And then you're getting like, and then it's just like, why? So, you know, I need you to elaborate a little more with this uh, Ric Flair and Mojo and all well, that. And I mean, Gronk, you know, he wasn't really doing the woo, but he was doing the Ric Flair chops kind of yeah, yeah. to hype up uh, Mojo Rawley. Uh, Gronk was in SmackDown, mm -hmm. uh, and then we, we have the Instagram clip. And it's it's a little funny if you want to check it out. I mean, that's I guess he's hyping him up for uh, upcoming WrestleMania, and he's doing it in in a Ric Flair type of way, which is you know, I mean, those chops sting, but it, it is what it is. Like he he has his own method of motivation. If we could get that video rolling, yeah, it's just I guess paying homage to the greats and just doing different things. And I guess you know it, it depends on who it is because some sometimes it, it it's classy, it's done. <laughs> and there's Rose in the corner. <laughs> Rose, what do you think about that, Rose? <laughs> 
I wouldn't want to be, I don't know, I don't, I don't need that much motivation, that's okay. <laughs> we, we saw Rose over there, Rose, what, what do you think of that? Is that some good motivation right there? I, I was like watching it and thinking that I wasn't on and then I saw my face on there. And I, was, I, I was hoping it would come to me because I wanted to do my Ric Flair just because I'm here, so... You ready? Go yes. Woo! <laughs> um, wait, I think I can do better than that. I think it's the pressure. I actually, by the way, I moved into my car. It's live, so it's it's one take. Woo! It, uh, we gave you a second one. Third time's the charm. Let's get it. Let's get a good one. All right, ready? We, we gotta wrap things up. Woo! Uh, <laughs> final final thought, Rose. Before we wrap it up, we got two minutes. What's your final okay. thought? So I just wanted to say I was listening to all your conversations, and I agree with Kim. On everything that she was saying. I think you're biased. So, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to say that. And um, and I'm, like I said, I'm in a little bit of a quieter area now. And I miss you guys. Um, well, sorry. Apparently, I can't even put the camera on myself. <laughs> I miss you guys a lot over there. And uh, it, I love the way the show looks. It looks a little bit different. And you guys are doing great things with it. And um, one day, I'll come back and, and Kim and I will hang How did we get Kim, by the way? <laughs> Well, we don't got time to go elaborate that. We can we can talk later. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk another girl. another <laughs> a final thought, uh, Ladybug. Um, no, I just want to say, uh, you know, thanks as always. Keep up, Real Fans, Real Talk dot com for all your room milk. Thank you so much again. Thank Lovely you, meeting you. And uh, you know, as always, that man, take it away. Right. Quick final Woo! thought. Yeah! <laughs> you know you got the lungs on her because she could sing, yeah. so she could, that, that was almost that was perfect. That was one. better than mine too. <laughs> but, but my final thought, since uh, Ladybug didn't get into it, Dwayne Wade, what are you doing with that that little uh, you know short sleeve blazer T shirt type of thing with a pocket square? Is that a new fashion? I know it's hot down in Miami and stuff, but you're showing up with a suit with short sleeves and I just don't know what that is. What did you see Baron with his tuxedo like his uh his uh Gauchos. ankle gaucho tuxedo <laughs> with the Yeezys on and the, you know I was just like hey you know I guess guys just feel like they've been left down for so many years you know with the fashion so now they just, just going for it. Statements. Just going well, for it. It's a lot better than the leopard skin stuff that we see some of the rappers wear and all that so I, I'll, I'll. That's a different you know, rumor you, you, you want to be you want to be comfortable Dwayne Wade it's a lot better than that. I don't want to see you in any of that leopard tight you know pants or anything but <laughs> all right <laughs> with that being said it was great to be a part of ladies right here on real fans real talk rose you gonna have to put some umph into it you gotta hit it like woo See, see, yeah. Yeah. We'll end off with that one. Thank you, Kim, again for coming on. Yes, it was thank a pleasure. You. Thank and you. for Ladybug and Rose Claire, the pioneer lady of Real Fans Real Talk. I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. Thank you all for joining us and have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Domus tripped young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log onto the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest, I'm talking about the greatest.